Okay, we're back in dwm.c. So let's see what we got here. So we're in the main function here, and for now, I'm just gonna ignore all of this. You know, it has some interesting stuff, it has check out the window manager, set up, scan, but we're gonna skip straight to the run function. So let's uh, go here. And I covered this a little bit in the last video, but I'm gonna cover it in a little bit more detail here. So first line, declares an x event variable for now on it's uh, defined as ev or declared as ev but i'm going to just refer to it as event so the x event uh, type is pretty interesting there's the x event type and then there's the x any event structure so the x event type is a union of all the possible different uh, X event types, which is a little confusing because the union is called X event. But what this allows us to do is um, all the different types inside this union, all the different structs inside this union have the same members. Uh, the, just the, the values of the members may differ. Um, or they have the same general structure, so we're able to use it the same way. And what's guaranteed in every single one of these X event structures is that they have a member that is event type. And that is why uh, down here, we're able to do ev.type. Um, the type of event this could be, this could be a button click, a key press, um, I think mouse movements count. There's, a lot of different types of X events. But let's move on. X sync. All of this does is that it makes sure that all previous X11 calls have been executed. And it just makes sure that, uh, you know, as the name implies, it syncs between the display and the program before it moves on to the main event loop. So this main event loop can be disrupted by setting this running variable to false. That's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Simple boolean. And then it calls x next event. And what x next event does is it copies the first event in the event queue and then removes it from the event queue and assigns it to this uh, x event variable. So here we pass in a reference to ev. And then whatever that first event in the queue is, it assigns it to ev. And if there are no events in the queue, x next event blocks. So which means that the while loop won't run anymore, the process will, won't be running and executing any more instructions until a new event comes in. And then uh, here we have this if statement. So before we talk about this if statement, I'm going to talk about the handler. So there's this handler array that we're um, using ev.type as an indice in. Uh, so let's find the handler. Oh, handler. Here we go. So the handler array is actually a an array of function pointers uh, of size last event. And so I actually spent quite a long time looking for what this last event value was. I couldn't find anything in the man pages or online. But I did find it by uh, grepping all my system libraries. And X last event is defined in the x11 libraries in the x.h header. And it's defined as 36, which it notes is larger than any event. Uh, this is because the event type is stored as an integer. So it just kind of increments through. I'm not sure what all the specific values are. But last event is 36, which is larger than any of the event types. So presumably there's 35 uh, events, or 36 events indexing from zero, I think. And so all of the so this is an array of function pointers, and all the function pointers are defined to take a parameter of a x event pointer. And how this array is defined here is actually some syntax I was not familiar with. I had to figure this out and um and 
so you, uh, as we said before, this handler array is 36 elements long, right? But there are not 36 um, entries here. I believe there's 14 different event types that the handler is actually handling. And uh, so that means there's a bunch of undefined values. So what this is doing is so button press, client message, configure request, these are all event types and they're defined by the XL11 library to be integers. So what this is doing is setting specific indices, um, specific elements uh, to these function pointers, but the rest that are not being defined here are just going to be undefined values. And I put a little note here, a little annotation, kind of showing an example. These are not the actual values um, but for example, what you could have a function pointer to button press and then some undefined values, some function pointer to client message, undefined value, and so on. Um, and, but, but it's setting each of these elements to a function pointer as the, because the, um, array is for function pointers and you can, and all these functions are inside, are defined inside this file. So... I'm not actually being covering these right now. We're probably going to cover them in a future video. Probably will not be covering all of these. Probably just whatever interests me. Um, you know, button button press could be interesting or motion notify or something. But I'm not going to go with, oh, over all of them. Let's go back to the run function. So now that we know what handler is, so what is it doing with the handler? So first is this if statement which I'm not completely sure about. And it seems a little weird to me to be using it this way, but I assume based on the context of how it's being used, if the event type is not, if ev.type is not an event type that handler actually contains, it'll be an undefined value, which I think it is assuming will be zero, which means this uh, statement right here will not run. And usually you don't want to do that. You want to, it's an undefined value. You don't want to assume what it is. But I believe that what may be the reason that they're doing this is that if we go back to um, handler, handler, you can see it is a static, uh, a static array. And so in the static memory space, perhaps it is easier to, um, oh, sorry, I'm just going back to the run function. Perhaps it is easier to assume that maybe static memory is uh, pre-allocated in a certain way that you can assume it's zeros. I'm not sure. That seems pretty um, suspicious to me. It's not something I would personally feel comfortable with, but I think uh, the people who wrote this code have a very good understanding of how the memory spaces work and how C handles them. Um, but I would consider this to be kind of a dubious method of doing this. But it is very succinct. They have it in one line of code, which I guess is the point. And since I... The event types that are being handled, very clear. There's the 14 that they're handling with this handler. And then there's only uh, the 36 event types total. They feel comfortable because everything else is so well defined. But anyway, if the event type does exist, it then uh, calls the corresponding function pointer. So that's what this handler, you know, ev.type, and then it puts passes in a reference to uh, the event variable. And then from there, it calls the corresponding function. So, you know, for your button pressed, for your mouse movement, for, you know, whatever. And in the future, um, so I'm not going to jump into looking at those specific functions right away. I think for next video, we'll be covering scan function and possibly the uh, setup function. Although this, I expect, to take me a lot more time. I, I have already looked at it, 
and it's all just uh, you know setting settings for the display, the window, and the root window, and all that. Um, you can see it also handles like defining what I uh, what events it's going to handle and things like that. And so I'm going to have to really dive deep into the X11 library. I'm not that familiar with the X11 library, so I'm going to have to learn what all these functions do, and I'll bring that back to you guys. So I'll see when that happens.